Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again to Cheat Code Jiu-Jitsu. Jeff here again. So uh, we've been working arm triangle stuff from control position. We've gotten all the way up to getting the actual arm triangle itself. We're going to start working today on options that are available before we get to the full arm triangle choke. In particular, options that come up when we're trying to get there but we can't quite get our head in place or our opponent is making the mistake of leaving an arm dangling and then we're going to take advantage of that. Uh, there's one submission that we're going to work today, which is the inverted gooseneck wrist lock, which we'll talk about how gooseneck wrist locks work. And then I've got another fun one for you here in a few days. Check back. We'll check that one out. So stay tuned. So the gooseneck wrist lock. It's a very simple submission, but it's also one that you need to be very careful with because the wrist is a very small joint and it's one that the pain kind of goes from zero to 60 really fast. It's easy to injure people with, so definitely be careful when you're doing wrist locks. The gooseneck wrist lock is probably the most simple wrist lock that there is. There's nothing particularly complicated about it. All I'm doing to make a gooseneck wrist lock work is I'm just taking his hand and I'm just folding it down like this and hyperflexing his wrist. There's two points of control that are mandatory for this. Number one is this area right here on the back of his hand. I've got to keep control of that and push it down. I start pushing down a little farther, that's when the pressure is going to come on. But number two thing that I have to keep control of is the back of his elbow. If I'm in here with Zach, I've got no control over the back of his elbow and I start pushing down, he just moves the elbow back, no problem, he's going to get away. If I control the back of the elbow so that he can't move his arm backwards, then when I start applying pressure down here on the wrist or on the top of the hand, it's going to hyperflex his wrist. And you see that gooseneck looking action that he's doing there. That's why it's called the gooseneck wrist lock. Pressure down, he taps. Like I said, be careful with that. So here's how this comes on when we're setting up an arm triangle. Go right there. Okay. So. If you don't know how we set up our arm triangles, you stop this video right now, you back up to the beginning of the arm triangle playlist, watch it from the beginning, come back. So in summary, I've got my hand under his head. I've got this hand down here, scooting up, scooting out. And if you'll remember from a few videos ago, this is what I said was kind of our first staging point that we get to, where I've got my arm that's under his head is under his shoulder gripping here. My second arm is now around here and I'm gripping around his head. The reason that I hold this position and I just kind of cook the guy for a little while is his best defense to this. It's not the answering the phone that can help, but that's not what he wants. What he really wants is he wants to get his arm completely out of here. And so even if he just pulls down, that's not going to work. He's got to make his hand go above his head, straighten out, and then he can get that elbow back down. So me being in tight like this, hand around the shoulder, hand locked up here, all the way around his head wrapped, this keeps me in place and keeps him from pulling that out because he doesn't have room to get his elbow out. So he can dangle this hand all he wants, but it's going to be very, very difficult for him to actually escape the position that I'm in. If you see this hand dangling right here, this is where the wrist lock comes in. Now, watch the little hand motion. You see this hand that I've got on his head? It's going to weave up, and I'm catching my hand, my fingers, right here on this part of his palm in between his pinky knuckle and his wrist. I'm going to catch right there, and then I'm going to turn this down, and I'm going to pull, and it comes to rest right here. So if you look, the top part of his hand right here with his knuckles is right up against the mat. His elbow is exposed. This is why I call it an inverted gooseneck wrist lock because we're not going to put the pressure on his hand. We're going to put the pressure on his elbow and it's going to drive into his hand, which is being immobilized by the mat. So I pull this in as tight as I possibly can. I'm going to move my chest up to his back and then I just sag down and that's where I get the tap. So it's pressure right here on top of the elbow, driving straight down. It goes, it transfers all that force to this point on his knuckles here, and then I'll get the tap with the inverted gooseneck wrist lock. As I said, this is one you need to be really careful with because if you go really fast, you can break a guy's wrist with this. So just ease into it. So one more time from beginning, I'm setting up my arm triangle. I go arm under the head, shoot this hand down to the mat, finger walk up. Once I get his elbow even with his ear, we turn back, finger walk this way, push it across, I start cooking him. Zach's trying to get his elbow free, he's dangling that hand, so I reach up, I grab, pull in, 
You've got them set up for a nice little wrist lock right now. Chest pressure over top, gently push down. Get the tap, inverted gooseneck wrist lock. Really nasty, comes on quick. A lot of people don't see that coming from that position. So throw that into your game. It's a nice little option for when you can't quite complete the arm triangle choke. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to turn on the notifications. And come back in the next one and you'll see another option from that same position. Thanks.